The internet is full of bro signs, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and today I'm going to talk about sinusitis. All my videos are directly referenced from the US National Medical Library so you can trust the information. So what is sinusitis? Why do you get sinus headaches? Why do you get headaches in cold weather? Why do you sneeze all the time? Why do you get all these uh, you know, sinus blocks, right? So what is the fuss about it? What are the symptoms? What is the treatment? What are the tests? I, let's talk about sinusitis in all the details possible. So sinusitis is present when the tissue lining the sinuses becomes swollen or inflamed. So there are a lot of sinus in your face, right? And it occurs as a result of infection from a virus or a bacteria or a fungus so that's the thing you what you have are two frontal sinuses there are two ethmoidal sinuses here in between and there is two maxillary sinuses here two maxillary ethmoidal and frontal sinuses if these sinuses get inflamed or swollen because of infection virus bacteria fungus you will have sinusitis so what is the cause Basically, uh, <clears throat> these air field spaces are there and uh, healthy sinuses, they don't contain any bacteria or even any germs, right? Most of the times, there are there is mucus which is uh, inside these sinuses or in the walls which is able to drain out and uh, air is able to flow into the sinuses, right? So, mucus is able to drain out through the exits and Basically, sinuses are filled with air. When the sinus opening becomes blocked or if there is too much mucus buildup, then the bacteria and germs can actually grow inside um, very easily. So, sinusitis can occur because of three conditions. First, either there is small, the small hairs uh, which are called cilia inside the sinuses they fail to propel the uh, mucus out their function is to continuously push out the mucus so if this happened this may be due to some medical condition the second condition if you have cold or uh, other kind of allergies if you have colds if you get cold infection or allergic reaction then this can also cause too much mucus right production so a lot of mucus is produced so which blocks the opening of the sinus and you have sinusitis then there might be deviated nasal septum the middle septum of the nose can be deviated there might be a nasal bone spur nasal polyp that or anything like that inside the nose which may be blocking the opening of the sinus right so when this thing happens right uh, there you will have sinusitis so the sinus gets filled with mucus and even sometimes bacteria they thrive inside okay so bacteria when the bacteria there will be pain and other symptoms so we will come to that but there are two basic types of sinusitis first is acute sinusitis in which the symptoms are present for four weeks or less four weeks or less it's acute it's called uh, is mostly caused by bacteria growing inside the sinus then there are chronic chronic sinusitis when the swelling of the sinus is present for longer than three months this may be because of a bacteria or a fungus right then you might have a higher risk of developing a sinusitis if you have so let's say allergic rhinitis, if you have hay fever, cystic fibrosis, if you are going to a daycare, right? And if diseases that, uh, uh, you have a disease that actually prevent the cilia from working properly, you have changes in altitude, if you're flying or scuba diving, if you have a large e adenoid, adenoids are also glands, uh, 
then uh, smoking if you smoke if you have abnormal uh, sinus structures if you have weak immune system like uh, if you're on chemotherapy or have HIV infections like that so you will have increased chances of sinusitis so if you do have sinusitis what will happen obviously in acute sinusitis adults very often uh, come uh, after a cold right that does not get better or even get worse after seven five to seven days and symptoms uh, will include something like cough or bad breath or loss of smell or even uh, worse cough at night uh, then fatigue fever headache generalized feeling of being ill then there might be pressure like pain pain behind the eyes toothache there can be tenderness in the on the face nasal stuffiness discharge sore throat uh, post nasal drip all these things can happen I mean, some combination can happen. Doesn't it's not necessary that everything will happen on one person. A different combination can happen depending upon what kind of sinus is involved. Which one, right? Then uh, symptoms of chronic sinusitis can be same for those like uh, acute. But however, the symptoms tend to be milder, right? In chronic sinusitis, and they last longer than 12 weeks. Symptoms will last longer than longer than 12 weeks and uh, that's the uh, how we diagnose chronic sinusitis then uh, that's the symptom then what is the symptom of child sinusitis in children in children you they might have cold or respiratory illness that has not that has been getting better and then then suddenly suddenly begins to get worse so in children they will have cold or respiratory illness that might be getting better and then becomes worse they might have high fever they might have a fever along with dark darkened nasal discharge which might last for three days at least three days nasal discharge can occur can occur with or without cough that's not necessary nasal discharge is important and uh, nasal discharge needs to be present for more than 10 days and is not, if it is not in, improving that means they have sinusitis in children so how can we diagnose? What are the tests? In the doctors will first look into the nose for signs of a poly, deviated nasal septum, or etc. etc. Then they will shine a light against the sinus, right? Uh, that's the trans illumination test, signs for inflammation. Then they might tap over a sinus area to find the tenderness or infection, right? Then uh, the doctor can also view the sinus through a fibro optic fibro optic scope this is called nasal endoscope or rhinoscope this is uh, basically to diagnose sinusitis this is often done in a uh, by a ENT specialist ear nose throat specialist and uh, many times imaging tests are needed including uh, x-ray uh, PNS views or uh, CT scan can be done for the sinuses to diagnose sinusitis or view the bones or tissues uh, very closely MRI can also be done if uh, to see if there are any tumors or fungal infections then most of the times regular x-ray of the sinus uh, can also diagnose sinusitis but most sometimes it might not diagnose very well all right that's why uh, CT scans are needed so if you or your child has sinusitis that do not go away or keep returning then you might be asked to do some tests like allergy testing blood tests for pure immune uh, function uh, ciliary function test nasal cultures nasal cytologies uh, sweat chloride test for cystic fibrosis all these tests are uh, special tests only done if uh, chronic sinusitis is there and it's not getting better then coming on to the treatment right first of all let's understand how you can take care of yourself first you need to apply a warm or moist wash uh, cloth on your face several times a day warm moist cloth right that's what you need to do drink plenty of water right which actually thins the mucus and helps draining out the sinus that might be the biggest cure sometimes then you need to inhale steam two to four times a day for example while sitting in the bathroom you with uh, and uh, you can do that 
in the bathroom while uh, running shower you can spray the with nasal saline several times a day you can use a humidifier you can use a, a saline squeeze bottle to sometimes flush the sinuses also but be careful uh, with the use of over the counter nasal spray decongestants right such as uh, uh, otrivin or uh, oxymetazoline right so or sometimes or also neos uh, site Neosinephrine, <laughs> they will help, they might help at first, but if you keep using them for a long time, more than 3 to 5 days, they can actually make the nasal stuffiness worse. Alright, so remember that. Then uh, to help ease the sinus pain or pressure, avoid flying when you have congestion. Avoid temperature extremes like sudden changes in temperature, bending forwards with head down, avoid those things, right? Try, you can try uh, acetaminophen, paracetamol or ibuprofen if you have pain. Then other medicines which can be used, uh, most of the times antibiotics are not needed for acute sinusitis, acute sinusitis. Most of these infections go away on their own, even when the antibiotics uh, are prescribed, they help. but. Uh, they might only slightly reduce the time it takes for the infection to go away. Antibiotics are more likely to be prescribed only if your child has uh, nasal discharge and possibly with a cough or uh, which is not getting better for uh, at least two to three weeks or if, if they have fever more than 102, uh, 102 degree Fahrenheit, 39 degree Celsius. If they have headache or pain in the face, if they have uh, severe swelling around the eyes, all these reasons are there to prescribe antibiotics. Then acute sinusitis should be treated for 10 to 14 days, right? That is the duration. Chronic sinusitis and needs treatment for 3 to 4 weeks, almost a month, right? And some people with chronic sinusitis may need special medicines to treat uh, fungal infection, right? But at some point, your uh, doctor will consider prescription medicines, more tests or referral to a uh, ENT specialist, right? ENT specialist, ear, nose, throat specialists are the best doctor for this kind of situation. Then other time of things which you need to consider are uh, LSG shots. If you have like L severe allergic reactions, then uh, you can see my allergy video for what is allergy shots, right? You need to avoid those allergy triggers you need to uh, you might uh, take nasal uh, steroid sprays antihistamines to actually decrease swelling especially if there is a nasal polyp or nasal allergy like rhinitis then surgeries may be done uh, to enlarge the sinus opening and drain the sinus then it might be done to remove the nasal polyp or deviated nasal septum and surgery is only considered if you uh, if symptoms do not go away for three months. If uh, your symptoms, if you have like uh, acute sinusitis uh, for more than two to three um, episodes every year, if you have that every year for two to three times, then you might consider surgery. Or if you have fungal infections, right? Surgery can be done to, as I said, to repair the nasal structure or the de deviated nasal septum can be repaired, nasal polyp can be removed from your body, right? Then most of the times <coughs> sinusitis can be cured with self-care itself and a little medical treatment. But if you are having repeated attacks, you should uh, obviously get it checked by an ENT specialist, right? Then if you don't get treatment at all, the problems may increase to an abscess sometimes you might have uh, infection going into the bone, many uh, osteomyelitis can happen, infection might go into the brain, meningitis, infection can actually go into the eyes also or vital cellulitis can happen. So if you have symptoms uh, which are uh, staying there for more than 10 to 12 days, 10 to 14 days, if you have a cold which is getting worse after 7 days, then you should go to a doctor. If you have severe headache, it's not getting relieved by medicine. If you have fever, if you have like symptoms, uh, if you are even after taking all your prescribed medicines, antibiotics properly, or if you have any changes in your vision, 
right during a sinus infection that's a sign when you need to go to a doctor again right a green or yellow discharge does not mean that you definitely have sinus infection or you need antibiotics that's quite uh, you know routine in uh, sometimes right green or yellow discharge is not a alarming sign then can you do something to prevent it yes the best way to prevent sinusitis is to avoid cold or flu or if you do get cold flu then treat it properly and quickly right uh, drink plenty of uh, water eat plenty of fruits and vegetables which are rich in antioxidants and their chemicals that could be actually boost your immune system and help your body resist infection then uh, you can get an infect influenza vaccine every year then uh, reduce stress exercise wash your hands uh, often particularly after shaking hands with others because it's very common in cold weather to actually get the infection from others then other tip other things which you can do is avoid smoking or even go out avoid going out into pollution on traffic in uh, dust storms right drink plenty of water as i said to keep your mucus moist take steam stick decongestants during the upper respiratory infection and uh, take allergies right if you do have allergy treat them quickly treat allergies quickly use a humidifier to increase moisture in the nose or sinus so that's all you can do for a sinusitis that's the that's complete that the information about sinusitis hope the information was helpful uh, do share this video do like subscribe hit the bell icon and let me know how you feel about this video i'm dr paramjit you're watching doctor education don't forget to uh, you know promote my channel it's your channel it's for education do let me know if you want me to make a video about certain uh, topics i'll uh, definitely consider so thank you so much guys all you need to do to stay healthy is stay connected